Hey friends, it's Melvin. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Here's just a few quick things I wanted to notify you guys about before we get started. First up, very soon, new episodes will be releasing Wednesday mornings rather than Tuesday. So don't panic if you don't see a new episode on Tuesday. Just wait a little longer and you'll see it in your feed. Second, we've introduced a mailbag. Check those show notes and toward the bottom you'll see a mailbag link. You'll then be able to text us any questions you might have about movies, the movie industry, or any movie slash Christian related questions you might have. Then we'll respond in a future episode, so send us your questions now. Up next, Patreon polls, which are available to Patreon supporters at the $3 tier or higher, have been updated. Supporters can now suggest films or shows to be reviewed at the end of each month. The two most liked submissions will become the options for the Patreon poll, so if you want to hear us talk about your favorite movie or show, join our Patreon and start campaigning. And lastly, whether you're a new or long-time listener, please consider writing a review or rating the Cinematic Doctrine podcast on iTunes and Spotify. Apart from financially supporting on Patreon, these are the two most helpful ways to support the show. And that's it. Enjoy the episode. You're listening to Cinematic Doctrine. So if you just press play uh, to listen to us talk about Percy Jackson, uh, you're missing out on 30 minutes, 31 minutes of my sister and I talking about, well, I should say it this way. Uh, They were telling me about this whole world that I know nothing about. TikTok, which is true, but specifically um, the world of book talk and its fascination with fast fashion books. Which I was like, what the heck is fast? I know fast fashion. <laughs> I know books. I do not know what fast fashion books is. And so I learned all about how, like, it's this really bizarre world of, like, well, you know, you're the one who was telling it. What, what's a very short way of explaining what fast fashion books are? Very poorly written, poor quality assurance books that somehow end up at your local bookstore and all of your local girlfriends, whether, like, friends of girls girlfriends are obsessed over and it. being published that's crazy because my in my head like i've always known it to be like yeah. digital books and it's like okay nope. whatever it's digital but to know like that they're it's, like, getting on published paper, we cut down trees for this this yep. is crazy <laughs> so, it's being sold like, in your local bookstore <laughs> like. we um we got to talk i got to ask a bit about that and learn more about specifics think of some comparisons i talked about like in movies there's some similar situ- situations where there's like you could call it like junky type stuff that's put up on uh, streaming services just to fill them out give them clout support on patreon for three dollars a month you gain access to that 30 minute discussion on uh fast fashion novels fast fashion books uh which i think is you know definitely relevant in terms of us talking about a percy jackson adaption not of course the newest one on disney plus but um, the old one. there's a lot of other benefits to supporting on patreon you're going to hear about those as you're listening throughout the rest of this episode we're going to be doing a party pleaser episode on percy jackson and the olympians the lightning thief so party pleaser episodes are when one of us one of the hosts of this episode are going to summarize the entire movie for you. you're going to fill you in from beginning to end and so if you haven't seen the movie in a long time enjoy the ride as we explain it to you if you're not interested in the movie but you still want to hear us talk about it and joke about it and have fun giving insight into the film you can listen to it and keep up just fine and if you just do not care about the movie and you never want to watch it anyway perfect because we're going to fill you in on it anyways it's going to be just fine we'll be going into it i definitely had a lot of the interesting things that i wrote about it uh but before we talk about this have we read it i have not how about you i have but it's been at least a decade so i don't remember much uh did you read the whole series or no. just a couple books into them? i think i got halfway through book two and then i just got bored and i haven't picked it up since um i do not have experience with percy jackson other than knowing that like harry potter was still popular but coming to a close fans of young adult were trying to find the next thing to read and mm-hmm. Percy Jackson sort of stepped in because yeah. it was like pretty interesting to people. It was different enough, but mm-hmm. also still kind of had the adventure and intrigue. Um, but I have no, yeah. again, no experience with the book, so I can't speak to that. I got the summary here though. So I guess we'll just, um, I guess we'll just get into it. So 
the opening of this film, first off, the thing that I notice is it says directed by Chris Columbus, and then it also opens exactly like a Harry Potter movie. <laughs> um, Chris Columbus, of course, directed the first two Harry Potter movies, and then as a Harry Potter movie opens, it's the Warner Brothers logo flying through clouds, like dark clouds. Well, it gets darker. <laughs> That's um, great. This movie also opens flying flying through clouds says directed by chris columbus and then at some point lightning starts to scatter everywhere until it vanishes yeah <laughs> and then uh, a giant water man comes out of the water <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it is uh the, the whole movie doesn't have bad effects all the time but we open with a really bad cgi yeah. effect and this is 2010 we've had good video effects mm -hmm. and frankly we've actually had good giant people effects by this point yeah um but this effect is not good i think it's the lighting he looks too lit for a scene that's supposed to be at nighttime he's a god so he he glows from within all right i guess the movie did tell me that when it uh seen not found. i mean a giant man <laughs> so yeah right. uh, so yeah giant water man <laughs> comes out of sea into land uh it's poseidon he is visiting Zeus atop a skyscraper, which we'll later learn is the Empire State Building. I guess it wouldn't be later, it would be now, but I didn't recognize it. So That's... they're on the Empire State Building. Yeah. <laughs> Zeus is saying, hey, someone stole the th my Thunderbolt. This is my power. And because it's been stolen, I don't have my power. Uh, that's why the lightning has stopped and there is no lightning. So Zeus blames Poseidon, saying, you took it. Um, Poseidon says, there's no way I could have taken your power and why would I have done that? I'm not even capable. And then Zeus says, well, our children can. And we're like, children? What? And so <laughs> Zeus is like, you definitely had contact with your son. He stole my lightning bolt. And if I don't get it back in like two weeks or something, I can't remember yeah, what it was. But a it's like a night, which is yeah, like a period of time. Yeah. War is going to break out. And yeah. So we got our title card. That's the opening yeah. of the film. I have a quick thought on that. Of course. Go ahead. What's that? How the heck does Poseidon figure it out? Not Poseidon. How does Zeus figure it out that Poseidon's son stole the lightning bolt? It's never answered. I don't know. Maybe there was a narrative implication. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff it's that's never answered. not I'm just like, how clarified. Did you, how'd you pick I that one? I think it's like Zeus is... <laughs> Zeus... I, th I don't remember if there was anything... Other, like, I think maybe Zeus might have said, you were jealous of me. I can't remember. Which is I typical literally just of Greek watched mythology. This movie. I know. But yeah, <laughs> Same. it's just crazy. There's so anyway. much jam-packed in the movie. It's not as wild as the as Dragon Ball Evolution was. That was shocking how <laughs> much was in that movie and how little was in that movie. But I digress. So <laughs> anyway. title card. Uh, mm -hmm. We get started with our full title. Percy Jackson is a mild-mannered high schooler. His friend has injured legs, paralyzed or injured. I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out. Uh, and I think his friend's name is what goes Grover no, Grover. I was going to say Gozer, but that's not right. That's nah, the keyhole. Grover. Um, <laughs> yeah. Stay puff marshmallow man. So Percy and his mom are staying um, with some deadbeat guy at his apartment. Percy and his friend are headed to a nearby museum. Uh, they're going to learn about some Greek gods. They have this substitute teacher that seems to be focusing a lot on Percy. We're not sure why, but if you've seen the trailer for the new show, then you probably already know why. And if you remember the trailer from the from 2010, then you remember why. Um, or if you read the book. <laughs> or if you've seen the movie. I guess you already know. Anyways, this teacher's uh, dangerous. Also, Percy heard a voice in his head tell foreboding news. Something about, like, it's things are about to get started. Be prepared. Be prepared. A guide then tells them about the Olympians. He says, uh, essentially, the Olympians, uh, these Greek gods, they had been hooking up a lot, and then they hooked up a lot with humans. In doing so, they created half-god, half-human creatures named demigods. But what's our history with Olympians and demigods and stuff? I don't know a whole lot. I know enough, I... but not... Yeah. I know that they exist, and like I've read the Iliad. I do know a little bit of like different Greek mythology. mythology. Zeus was a bit of a... He sleeps person. around. He sleeps and around. Uses people a lot. And is awful. <laughs> despite the fact that he has a wife. Uh... So do we like? Do we like them? Not like I look I... up to them, but do yeah, we yeah, find yeah. them compelling as characters? I like. I like Greek mythology. I think I've always kind of really liked it. One of my favorite games is Age of Mythology, which is basically Age of Empires, but with right. Greek mythology. Like, yeah. Um, I've read a couple different, like actual, like the Greek myths. I do like Hercules. The both the old sci-fi TV show from way back when, and also the Disney movie. Um, so I oh my enjoy gosh, stuff. I have vague memories of the show you're talking about. I feel like we watched it at Grandma and Grandpa's a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, like it was it's like, like it's the same era as like Xena, the Warrior Princess. I yeah, think they even like did a crossover. Highlander, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So like I know a little bit. 
of stuff. Yeah, like the main, the three main gods, Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, kind of hate each other, but they yeah. work together. Yeah, but they hate each other. It's like there's always <laughs> there's always a constant back and forth. Um, I have some issues with the depiction with Hades and Persephone, but like again, the author pro- I think took some of the myths and just kind of did it his own thing, which happens. I'm I'm currently going through a graphic novel about the story of Hades and Persephone and their love story, and it's like modern times, mm. and there's like whole storylines that are kind of sort of being adjusted and changed to tell this story in this author's way. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just, does it get done well? And in this movie, I don't think it does. I've always, I I find them interesting. I don't find them as interesting as I think most people do. But for this movie, uh, I I just don't know if I've ever seen a movie where I've seen them done well. Mm. I that mean, even fair. Troy just ignores them. They don't even do them in Troy. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so the substitute teacher um, gets Percy and pulls him aside and says, we need to talk. Percy's like, uh, OK, I guess I did something wrong. So they end up moving into this other room by themselves. And then the substitute teacher transforms into a creature and says, the lightning bolt, you have it. Give it to me. <laughs> uh, she attacks Percy um, and asks where the bolt is. He's very confused. Uh, Pierce Brosnan was one of the other That's teachers. Who it is. I forgot he who ends it up was. showing it. Yeah, James Bond. Uh, <laughs> he ends up coming in, and he's a uh, Pierce Brosnan, the other teacher, and then the paralyzed friend come in, yeah. and they end up saving uh, Percy. Which I don't know if you said it, but Pierce Brosnan is in a wheelchair. He's in a wheelchair. Yeah, that's correct. I like the implication that this movie, if you're paralyzed, you're probably like a sp- like some sort of creature. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> later, we're going to find out they're like mythological creatures. Yeah. Um, they then send uh, uh, be- after they save him, this creature ends up fleeing and running away. And Percy's like, what the heck is going on? How did yeah. you guys not freak out about the monster? And <laughs> then like we're learning from the friend. The friend is saying like it's clear that the friend knows more as mm-hmm. well as Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan says like, Hey, take this pen. It's going to protect <laughs> you. Use it when you need it. And Percy's it's like, a, it's a it's pen. pen. What am I going to do? And he's like, just <laughs> use it when you need to, which I wish he gave more instructions. Cause what if he like clicked it and pointed it the wrong way? Right. And then, like, <laughs> right, the cause it's a sword. If you're listening, it basically, he presses the button and then a, a sword comes out of it. So he could very easily have stabbed yeah, himself. Right? Um, <laughs> the bloopers. Yeah, he's like, trying to hold it like a uh, Ahsoka Tano and like pulls it in the wrong direction. But, <laughs> uh, and then of course the, his friend, the one who's paralyzed, um, uh, and has, he's had crutches these whole time. He's not actually, anyways, he yeah. knows more and he says, Hey, t- take you and your friend and go get your mom. You guys need to flee. You're being targeted. So Percy and his Psych. paralyzed friend, yeah. uh, Grover <laughs> end up going to their mom's place. Hey, don't forget. There's a lot of fun content missing from this episode because you're not listening on Patreon. Head over to patreon.com forward slash cinematic doctrine and support for $3 a month to gain access to uncut episodes with upwards of 40 minutes of bonus content each. You'll thank me later. So my next header is to the camp. Um, Basically, uh, Grover, Percy, and the mother are driving. It's the middle of the night and we're learning, like, we have to go to this camp. We have to go to this camp. Percy's like, I don't know what's going on. The mom's like, just trust me. I really loved your dad once. He was stunning. And then he left. That's right. We start learning. (laughs) (laughs) um, His mom's like, well, I need to start telling you a bit about your father and starts explaining like yeah there was this relationship that's how you came into the picture um i like the pga explanation for how kids are made which is just and then you came into the picture um (laughs) is usually whatever they say in movies um so yeah percy's learning this backstory but before he can finish uh and then hearing more about his father a minotaur comes out of nowhere and attacks their car flips it over percy's friend uh it turns out is not a um paralyzed person with crutches but a mr tumness and he leads them <laughs> fleeing to the camp that's what that's i wrote satiric. in my notes because i couldn't hey. remember what satire was yeah, so satiric. i called him a mr tumness over and over <laughs> hey if it gets you remembering so i like ja- percy jackson's like like why are you taking off your pants <laughs> yes yeah and I they're like, like in a flipped over car you- my wife like, like what are you doing <laughs> why are you taking off your pants <laughs> and then yeah he ends up having satire legs he yeah well he's a satire so he has fuzzy goat legs mm-hmm. a keyword fuzzy so they end up arriving at camp it's camp half blood um mm-hmm. but as they're running into the campground percy's mom can't go into it specifically because she doesn't have uh Any i guess you would god call it like blood? god blood yeah. yeah i was trying to figure out what would be the word for that 
Um, because of this, while he's safe behind this magical barrier, when the Minotaur shows up, the Minotaur grabs the mother and she ends up vanishing into like a, cl- a black cloud. So she we're goes, like, Oof. oh my gosh, if you're a kid, you're like, oh my gosh, she died. But if you're right. an adult, you're like, okay, we didn't see her die on screen. So <laughs> exactly. I'm pretty sure she's going to be a brag. <laughs> um, Percy, who's filled with rage and now knows that the pen is a sword, steps outside the barrier, fights the Minotaur, and ends up killing it. With uh, its own horn. Whip. Yeah, he uses his <laughs> own horn. Yeah, I just want to say something I was disappointed about. When the Minotaur tosses the car, the car does not land and explode. <laughs> I was a little yeah, bummed. it could have been neat to maybe have like a car explosion or something. Yeah, it was like, like it was like that perfect moment. I'm thinking of like red letter media, like is it going to explode? Is it going to explode? And then it explodes. A cool visual. For yeah, no cars reason. exploding are cool. It just explodes. We need <laughs> to get out of this car fast <laughs> because the gas is leaking and there's a minor fire. And that's and then when then you're like, I need to take my pants it. off. And Percy's like, What do you mean you need yeah. to take your pants off? There's a fire. There's fire. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like as he's kicking the door open, the pants catch on fire and they're like, You're making it worse. Add and he's like, I'm stakes. making it better. Yeah. Even though uh, there's obviously a Minotaur trying to call it, like kill them. Let's like up the stakes a little bit more. Because then there could be like a fire in the forest yeah. right in the camp. Like, come on. <laughs> but like what you're kind of getting at is like even in this scene, and it's going to happen in the later scenes, the problem arises and then is solved. It, like yes. immediately. So fast. Super simple. And Done. when the problem arises, <laughs> there's no hurdles in the problem. The closest is this scene where, like, the mother gets captured by the Minotaur and yeah. vanishes. And you're like, but, wait like, a minute. Yeah, having, like, <laughs> oh, the car was flipped over, and then now the car is a hazard with a fire could have made the – it would just make this yeah. scene more memorable yeah. because it's, like – I can't relate to a minotaur coming after me. Yeah, right. But I can relate to like the fear of fire and the mm-hmm. fear of a car accident. So like, I don't know, something like that yeah. to me would make the scene more compelling. But Percy ends up defeating this minotaur. And now he's like, my mother's dead. I don't know what to do. But by that, I mean, he says it very plainly. And yeah. he doesn't look that bothered. <laughs> he doesn't. He's like, he doesn't go cry. He doesn't like sulk. He doesn't like go up to people and be like, I have to get my mom. Like he doesn't do that. And I don't remember if like, if he reacts a little differently in the books again it's been a while but i i did not consider that i confess i definitely watched this while i was working because it was the only time that i really Sometimes had that's what you gotta but do honestly this movie was very easy to like have on in the background while still semi paying attention to it because i've seen it at least to take twice. notes too because it was <laughs> but yeah you make a good point he just didn't react he even sees a girl and is like oh she's cute well, and his so, mom is like maybe dead. <laughs> is now the time? Yeah, I thought of that too. I was like, why like, is he interested in another woman already? <laughs> and he's like, oh, you're my <laughs> new mom now. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, it's like awful. <laughs> so, um, Harry Potter, when it like the movies do so well in building these really, really compelling and complicated characters. Of course, at the start, they're very simple, right? You mm-hmm. have smart. Um, smart girl who's kind of snooty but has a heart who connects with people and is trying to really connect with them. The goofy guy who is brave. And then you have like Harry Potter, right? The stand in, but also not just the stand in, but Harry Potter as a character is almost like a patiently reflective, resilient, and also restrained individual. And he has to yeah. be because of where he grew up and where he's living. Yeah. And so, like, when things happen to him that are maybe crazy or traumatic, you you can understand his ability to be self-controlled yeah. or maybe to postpone the emotions he would have mm-hmm. for later because, because he couldn't show any of he it. He couldn't yeah, he'd have to wait to go under the stairs mm-hmm. in his room and even then he probably had to still be quiet because right? it's like it's a staircase it's not exactly. it's not a real wall. So Logan Lerman or Logan, Percy Jackson's character in this movie doesn't get a lot of coding to tell us what he is. And like later on, he talks right. about like, I don't have a lot of friends or this and that. And I'm like, I didn't know that. You just right? told me that. Also, and also he's kind of just a good looking skater kid. So yeah, like you exactly. imagine he probably has friends. Right. <laughs> like- <laughs> I think though, too, you make a good point about this, like emotional thing. He's clearly emotional because he hates that his mom is dating this very abusive husband that's boyfriend. like the most character like, we get of him but he like he actually yeah. reacts to that like there's a yes. reaction noticeably yes but not to his mom maybe dying yeah like... isn't that interesting it's super weird directing because 
Yeah, like Chris, hmm. 10 years ago, Chris Columbus would have been doing Harry Potter 1 and 2. And it's like, those are really good adventure movies. And they yeah. feel so good to watch. It's like amazing. And then you're watching this. You're like, why did Fox say, hey, do it again? 10 <laughs> <Right>. years later. <laughs> you're right? like, it's been 10 years. He's uh, he's a different person now. You're asking him to make the same movie. How is right? he going to just do that? Especially when this is so much more bloated than um, Harry Potter 1 mm -hmm. uh, in, in particular. I mean, Harry Potter 2 is a massive story, and yet yeah. that one still gets across, too. But, mm -hmm. okay, so Mom is may or may not be dead. Um, we're finally inside Camp Half-Blood. Percy passes out. Percy, yeah, Percy and passes out, and he wakes, up, and he like wakes up at later. the camp, and he learns his friend still is... Still not freaking out. He's still not freaking out. <laughs> he he realizes that his friend is a Mr. Tumnus, which I wrote down satire. <laughs> um but that also explains some of his more flirtiness later, since I know satires yes. are known for being yep. flirty in, in classic mythology, yep. mm -hmm. as are, I guess, just most <laughs> creatures. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so it goes. Uh, Percy learns that demigods are everywhere, essentially. Um, some train to become warriors and, and readers, etc. I didn't write a note here because I was just watching the movie as I, as, as I do. But I just was thinking, like, Movies have some fantasy movies that are modern day. So like, mo I guess this isn't considered um, realism. What's it called? Fantasy realism? Uh, not probably not the term. I can't it's... remember what the term is. But like, they always have difficulty having to be like, well, how are they hiding it? And then you're going like, but why are they hiding it? Like, yeah. why are they? Why are they in Camp Half Blood training with swords? when guns exist it's yes. just such a weird thing to me to think about um i kind of like that and, and it's a different story to tell yeah if you do like the like how anime will have like they have magic guns or something yeah. like that or even like xenoblade chronicles is like the one gun user in the game is a healer so they're mm -hmm. firing bullets that explode and the mist heals like they so it's like so that but why swords? Right? <laughs> like, like there isn't are... anything interesting about it. <laughs> like later on, somebody throws a blade to cut the wing off of a magic shoe. And I'm like, wouldn't a bullet work? <laughs> like, yeah. like, it's just a shoe. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if you I need guess to know how to if throw they them explained, <laughs> like, why. Like you're saying, like, if it was, like, some sort of, like, a magical blade, magical arrows. Like, if yes, they like a magical weapon why, would make sense. Or, like, maybe they really are only going against, like, their kind or monsters in their world. Maybe and, like, in the, the book only way to do that is with the, like, guns don't work on these things. Like, if they gave that explanation, cool. Then they don't need magic swords and magic arrows. We just already know guns don't work on these things. Like, you could shoot them, but it's not going to do anything. Do you Give think, us that what? explanation. <laughs> I just had this uh, awful, like, it, not an awful idea, it'd be kind of awesome. So, <laughs> okay, so they can't use guns because we can't put some sort of magic coating on bullets. It doesn't work. The gunpowder burns off the coating. So we have to mm -hmm. use swords because swords, we can put the magic coating on and it cuts through creatures. Yeah. And then you have your uh, character Grover, because he's the goofball, kind of leans back and he goes, but what about saw blades and we make a launcher? <laughs> and then you could coat the saw blades and yeah, stuff, right? <laughs> walking around with like uh, that freaking gun from Dead Space, <laughs> just shooting like the Ripper blades at people, just cutting off like hydra Bay heads. Blades. Thinking like <laughs> yeah, Beyblades, like just going Bay around blades. like pulling it, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Consider this, Percy Jackson. I will fix your problems. Give me the lightning bolt. Oh, um, so okay, he's in the camp. His friends are Mister Tumnus. Percy learns demigods are everywhere. Some train to become warriors. Anyways, that's that's the story we're in. Percy learns uh, about a character named Annabeth. That's the character that he was eyeballing earlier, who ends up being the daughter of Athena, who they say is like she Athena in particular is like this goddess of war and wisdom mm -hmm. in battle. So we're like, OK, so Annabeth's probably going to be very strong. And that's sort of what they're setting up to be. Percy learns that one of his teachers, Pierce Brosnan, is a centaur, which so he would hide as a paraplegic. He had a magical then, wheelchair, which I guess hid <laughs> his like his like. Horse, horse ah. haunches yeah <laughs> so percy is oh, learning man. a lot of things um including the fact that his father is also poseidon in particular and he I couldn't... doesn't blink like no reaction oh my gosh my teacher is half horse what the heck like and he's riding with a bunch of other horses like nothing just do you think the script said i'm a what 
I'm a Poseidon son, <laughs> like, like Harry Potter. Probably. I think in the book, though. You're um, a Poseidon son, right? Percy. <laughs> I think in the book, and like I'm probably wrong, but I think I remember he doesn't find out that way and like no one knows who his dad was like it was that much of a secret but they know that like like he still is thought to have stolen the lightning bolt but like he doesn't know people don't know and like he has to go do something to find out who his parent is and then like the parent like accepts him kind of i I vaguely remember something like that that like he's living in like a crappy tent until he finds out that he's Poseidon's son, and then he upgrades to, like, the lakefront, like, cabin. Well, so, like, one thing I thought was, like, if you're telling me demigods are everywhere, what's the significance of Poseidon being his dad? Like, are you telling me right? that, like, Poseidon, own, Poseidon only has, only has one. one offspring? Or, because, like, now you're making it seem like, I guess there's... <sighs> Demigods yeah. everywhere. So it's like, the, but there's I, also sure... like a plethora of gods in the Greek right. pantheon. Like there are. Tons. So I'm sure in like the book that's covered, but in yeah. the movie, I'm thinking like I guess there's other Poseidon kids or some of the other kids here. Yeah, Poseidon I don't remember. Kids? Like what's going on? I want to say that in the book there was like only one, and it was him, and that was like kind of significant that like Poseidon only procreated once <laughs> which would then make him more like noble which by the end of yeah. the movie we at least get a little bit of that which is nice so. how we got there i don't know you may not know this but the easiest way you can show your support for cinematic doctrine is to rate and review the podcast on itunes spotify or wherever you listen so press pause and share your thoughts we'd love to hear what you have to say and then press play again so you can hear the rest of the show That's when I have my header, the plot line. Um, so yeah. someone is framing Percy for stealing Zeus's bolt. As such, Percy now needs to learn how to survive a potential war. So they can't play some war games. This capture scene is the much flag. Basically capture the flag. <laughs> yeah, this scene is a lot longer than my notes are, but that's because it's just an action <laughs> scene. Um, they can't play some war games. Percy and Annabeth grow into a rivalry and they have a battle. Um, during this battle, he's getting nicked up. Um, and then at some point he learns that he has the power of water to heal himself. So he does that and he's able to fight back again. Um, after the war game is over, there's this party, but it's crashed by Hades. And he comes in through the bonfire to talk to everybody. Um, he attacks them a little bit, but not violently or fatally. He's just trying to get everyone's attention. He's trying to get Pierce Percy's attention. Percy perks up because he specifically hears that Hades says, like, if you bring me the bolt, I'll give you back your mother. And mm -hmm. he gets proof of that his mother's alive. I had a note that just says, hey, cool development. I like political intrigue in movies. Uh, I like the idea of like this object exists and more not. I'm sure this is way more detailed in the book, but <laughs> the movie sort of alludes this idea of like this bolt exists. It's very powerful. We're going to add more credence to this MacGuffin by not just saying it's missing and it's powerful. Now everybody's taking an opportunity to try to get it. Try to get it, And yeah. so I like the idea of like Hades re coming out of nowhere to just be like, I heard this bolt's uh, for sale. Mm -hmm. I really want it. I'm yeah. going to bargain for it. That's and cool. It's, and there's a good point to that though too, because at the very beginning, Poseidon does say like, I can't take your power, Zeus. Like I, I think it's like there. He does not have the ability to take another god's power, and Hades, yes, yeah. also being a god, could never have that opportunity either. And so but the fact now that, the that it's away like from out. Zeus, yeah. anybody could have it, which is what we start seeing. Like the Minotaur was probably after it. Uh, maybe they were. Hi maybe he was hired by somebody. The the Fury may have been hired, which yeah. I don't even know if that was mentioned. It might just be a free for all. Everyone knows that the bolt is missing, so everybody wants it. Um, but Zeus, or I'm sorry, Hades specifically wants it because mm -hmm. he would have had no other way to get it because he is like strictly unable to take the power away. And it's also just a good plot development for explaining why our protagonist is innocent and also suffering like being targeted by mm -hmm. people and very confused he's both like, like i don't have the freaking bolt and then also everyone's trying to kill him for the bolt yeah which i just think is really good like that means like hey he's he he has a very good reason to clear his name yeah um and then it makes it more thrilling i'm sure in the book um that he's basically a uh 
a fish out of water going into this mm-hmm. environment um forced into it by violence and and threat so mm-hmm. that that just makes it fun so i like this idea it perked up my attention although i did think his plan was a little dumb percy determines to go to the underworld to get his mother back his friend and annabeth uh decide to go i said his friend a lot because i didn't hear his name was grover until like two-thirds into the movie so if i say his friend it's grover um anyway so grover and annabeth decide they're going to go with him his plan in particular is i'm just going to go tell hades i don't have it and then he'll give right? him, give me back my mom <laughs> And I was I'm like, to convince mm, him. I can't. I have like that doesn't seem like enough. But okay, like, we'll find do out. you know who Hades is? My literal first thought was, <laughs> do the Disney movies exist in this universe? Right. Because if they do, he would know this is not a good idea. <laughs> okay. Go even further. Does Greek mythology even exist in this world? Because I had we're going to talk about it as we get through like the different quests that they do. I don't think they even know that half the things in Greek mythology exist and they're kids of gods. I mm, yeah. I have problems. <laughs> it's it's the difficulty of young adult fiction <sighs> I find is they do big broad extravagant things. Yeah. Um in a way that's a bit more extravagant than more I don't know, like more adult fantasy stuff, Mm -hmm. which either commits to the bit and goes full fantasy, completely original planet, completely original continents, complete, or is like subtle fantasy where it's like magic sort of exists in the real world, but Mm -hmm. everyone keeps hush hush because like there's like a kryptonite, so to speak, that like if they find out you just die immediately. But I digress. This is like that middle ground where it gets so much more complicated. Mm -hmm. And for movies, it's like worse because you have two hours, maybe 90 minutes to explain all of that stuff. And you're like, oh, gosh, good luck. So they decide in their adventure there before they go, they're like, we're going to meet up with Luke because Luke, Luke is another character at the camp that we would have just met earlier. Whatever. Luke uh, basically has materials for them that can be helpful before they leave. He's got good knowledge. And they're like, he kind of just has knowledge of like, how we might be able to get to the underworld. Mm -hmm. So when they meet up with Luke, Luke's like, Hey, like my, it's something, I forget which God is his father, but it's like one who, Hermes, he he travels, he's like the messenger who passes through. And so he's like, uh, if you're ever traveling to uh, Hades realm, uh, I guess it's just called Hades. Is it just called Hades? So yeah, Hades is like, the underworld, a, the person but Hades also the is also the person. That's right. Yeah. So that's right. They call it the underworld in this. Um, yeah. So the underworld is easy to get into, but extremely difficult to get out. So what Hermes will do is he'll have these little pearls that like you can go into the realm. And then if you take this pearl, envision a location and you crush it, you'll be immediately transported out of it. So um, they're like, hey, collect these pearls before you go into the underworld so that when you want to get out of the underworld, you can immediately bounce. They also end up getting a really cool shield. It's like one where it's like easy to store, but then when the second you chamber it, it uh, opens up. That's neat. We also get some flying shoes, very classic style flying shoe of like you put the shoe on and the shoes have wings on them and then you fly around. Mm-hmm. I, I've never been a fan of the aesthetic of that, but whatever. That looks so Chuck weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, looked, it didn't look good in, in Black Panther 2. I didn't like it there, but I get it. Like, it's the thing that exists, so people just do it. But... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were, I'm like, it was in Black Panther 2. Yeah, I forgot, Namor. It's like on his feet. It isn't even shoes. It's just like a part yeah. of his body. So they end up stopping at this place called Auntie M's to find the first pearl. Right, so they also got a map that, like, you, you think about what you want, and it'll show you where to go. So mm-hmm. the map shows them where the first pearl is. It's Auntie M's. They're going to travel across country. I don't think I got every location's uh, name, but we're I think they're in New country. York, but eventually, so like they technically go down to Jersey and then they do go across country. If yeah, this will be their, yeah. this will be their road trip part of the story. So the first place honey M's is just this, they're going to find this pearl that's located there. When they finally get there, it's like this garden shop with a bunch of statues everywhere, mm-hmm. um, which I liked that like my, my pea brain didn't realize what was being set up here. So when it <laughs> happened, I went, oh, okay. <laughs> so basically, Ani Ams is actually Medusa's um, current residence. Um, it's hidden as a stone fixture garden shop. Uh, clever, but a little silly. And then I wrote, okay, with six A's. <laughs> yeah, I said, what, what was my note? To what end do all these gods and creatures stay hidden anyway? Yeah, like they're all powerful. Who cares? Like, yeah. <laughs> why are they hiding? I guess right. you're like maybe there could have been a like a little bit of setup for like I don't I don't need everything explained to me. 
Yeah. But, but we need something. When you have so much power, <laughs> there's yeah. like this degree of like, yeah, at this point, why don't you just get in front of everybody and go, I am Iron Man? Like, what's yeah. the big deal? <laughs> like, like, again, an explanation could be, and like this has been used before in other shows, that like the people stopped believing. And so to show, like, even though they're real in this world, to show themselves it wouldn't matter because no one believes them or they could be like persecuted or something for being who they are. Like something like that's been used in other things that have like these deity type things. Like that's why they're hidden is because like no one, no one believes in us and things would happen. There's none of that. I mean, even Grover is like, by the way, some of the like people in the white house are demigods. And I'm just like, Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, well, then why doesn't everybody know? Because right? uh, humanity has already shown that it's capable of mass murder and genocide. So, like, setting up the fact that we're in the year 2010 doing this storyline, mm -hmm. like Camp Half Blood, no point does Percy go, why aren't we out in public? And then mm -hmm. someone could just go, like, just a throwaway line, right? Where it's just like, yeah, there's the Great War, and at some point we realized, like, we, we had to hide safe. or something. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Um, but, like, then you go into, like, Medusa, who it's, like, mythologic. Like, either there's Gorgons who exist in the world, mm -hmm. or one Medusa, which if it's one Medusa, my thought is, like, that means they're, like, really powerful. Why are you hiding? Who cares? Right? Why are you selling statues? Who cares? Right? Or, and honestly, <laughs> she's not even, like, really selling them. She just lives there. She just <laughs> turns people to stone in their statues. What she should but actually do But then did she commission the sign? Sell them. Like, but that's the thing is, like, the more, like, creepy aspect of what she's doing is she should, act like, actively be selling them. Like, the kids should, like show up while like medusa is over here in a corner in the middle of a sale selling a real person who has been turned to stone to some collector or something that was a like make it creepy <laughs> you could have some really fun set it set dressing then because then it's like okay so she's basically a serial killer right exactly and she knows not to just turn people in her town to stone so like maybe there's a garage in the back and mm -hmm. we see that there's like a pickup truck or an rv and it's like oh she's like in the back of the rv when they're hiding from medusa it, they look and they're like why are there all these statues and it's like oh it's because it's people from across the freaking united right? states who have been stuffed into the back of this rv who are then brought to be like new mm -hmm. product and yeah. it's just like there some of them might have tags on them already like right? she's just like i pulled over and had to kill like do Make that it give me some of that <laughs> as it is it's like all these statues are overgrown and she's just a hoarder and, which like and doesn't yeah. do anything like it's not as creepy yeah. <laughs> it's just a little silly and it's also silly that she's wearing matrix outfits yeah <laughs> Enjoying this episode? Grab that share link and tell your friends. Word of mouth is the most effective way for a podcast to reach new listeners, so don't be shy. Share the episode wherever you can. So yeah, there's another woman during the scene who's holding, um, panicking and holding on to Daddario, but she ends yeah. up looking, turns to stone, so now Daddario is... It's stuck. A Annabeth. Now Annabeth uh, is stuck. Yeah. I wrote in my note just says, oh, this is just where I had a ton of notes. It's like this is scene. <laughs> this scene is so bad is one of my notes. <laughs> yeah, and then my weird. other note is Grover helps save Annabeth by knocking the hand off of the statue. But then the <sighs> hand is still completely gripped around Annabeth's hand. But oh. then Annabeth just moves the hand and it falls off. So I didn't see the thumb fall. She might not have been able to like. But then later in the movie, it's going to show that the grip was so tight. It like rope burned, stone yeah. burned her hand. I don't know. So I didn't even consider just that. Nit nitpicking a little bit. <laughs> but, but like if these people could have been saved, this poor woman. I know. I no thought that too. I was like, arm. Wait, so like, if you kill Medusa, what if everyone comes back? She's going to be like gushing blood and she's going <laughs> to freak out and probably die. In a better movie, <laughs> that would have happened. <laughs> In a much oh, better movie. And I forgot that happened. I'm like, how does she get out of it? Like, I'm thinking like, just get some like oil or butter or something. She probably could get her hand out of that. I thought of pretty that easy. I and no, Grover, thing. without thought, just takes yeah. his crutch and goes, Quack! no hesitation. And it's like, and no oh one mentions gosh. it, which could have no been a funny joke. About it it would yeah, have been a right? funny joke. Like, what happens if she comes back and Grover's like, I, 
I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> and then, like, it could be a funny background gag after Medusa's dead that Grover's, like, trying to reattach it. Or before they leave, right? he's like, I got it. And then he walks away. And then and from like, behind, falls. we see that there's tape. or so- Yeah. <laughs> we are so much funnier. <laughs> right? Why, why couldn't we write We should have made this movie. Uh, okay. So, Annabeth uh, ends up driving a car, driving the car into Medusa, which uh, incapacitates her for a minute long enough. For Percy to then chop her head off and kills her. Yep. Um, A lot of product placement for the iPod Touch, which is kind of fun to see again. (laughs) I Um, was not looking at the TV for that, so. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) using the iPod Touch background (laughs) to to do that. They acquire Medusa's head as if it's an item. uh, And Mm -hmm. also Medusa drops the pearl that they need to travel to the underworld. I do like this cheeky idea that like. It's like a video game, role-playing game, where you're just getting items. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of fun. I appreciate that. Um, Okay, so the next place they're going to be traveling to Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. So characters have some heart-to-hearts. That's really all I wrote. Um, We learn that gods cannot have a relationship with demigods. In other words, like they uh, they can't be friends with their kids. Like parents with their children. Um, Probably because of like power. There's probably power dynamics to that. And sometimes gods still whisper in secret to their kids, which we've known throughout the movie because Percy keeps hearing stuff. Mm -hmm. But now we're learning like Annabeth has also heard stuff too. Um, Also, Percy can use his healing powers for other people as well. That won't come back later, but it's just like a neat thing. Oh yeah, that's the like it never comes back. Yeah. Oh man, that's funny. Um, It's just like the the teenage power fantasy of like I have superpowers, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. It isn't the last time he uses his water powered, but it's the last time it's used in that way. Yeah. So this is a long note I have, but it's just uh, I and I kind of alluded to it before, but by this point it was really settling in. I said Chris Columbus, you know, directed Harry Potter one and two nine years before Percy Jackson. It's so clear that Fox just wanted him to hit the YA success button again. I mean, at this point, Harry Potter was starting to come to its close. I think 2011 is the last of the the good Harry Potter movies. But it's like a decade later after YA was really taking off. Uh, and at that point was totally graduated beyond it. I mean, meanwhile, one year earlier, a new movie called Iron Man had just come out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and was about to solidify the complete change from fantasy YA stories with big wars in them. So like the Star Wars prequels or Lord of the Rings into the superhero movies this movie is not only too late being in the tw- at 2010 it's also just not magical or transportive like harry potter was uh and nor is it going to happen again with dc right now where dc is going to be rebooted with this is me just projecting forward like yeah oh we're doing it again right like dc is trying to reboot again aquaman uh the second aquaman was the ending of the Zack snyder stuff now we're waiting on james gunn to get a superman movie it just feels like it's going to happen again where we're like, OK, we're doing Superman again. And it's like, guys, we've had like 14 years of this particular iteration of superhero movies. It's over. <laughs> yeah. And then like we even had Fantastic Beasts, which tried to continue the Harry Potter thing, but it's on its own degree. Now, that is also critically not received well, whereas like every Harry Potter movie was critically received well, uh, I think, except for six for the most part, was kind of considered middling. And I even remember seeing Six in theaters and thinking, this is a little Mm -hmm. not that fun. Um, But the rest were all really cool. The industry does this a lot, um, where it kind of sees success in critical and financial success and then tries to recreate it. Um, I would say like the late stage superhero equivalent is like Endgame did so well. So now every big blockbuster was becoming $300 million mm-hmm. to, to make. And it's like, what are you doing? That's so unwise, which is the one yeah. thing I've always been thinking is like, why the heck was an Indiana Jones movie over like $280 million? That's yeah. wild. I think that was like $350. Uh, but that's like so insane. Who thought yeah. that was a good idea? Like Indiana Jones hasn't had a movie for 10, 15 years by yeah. that point. And Endgame was like, you spent 10 years building up to that. So you yeah. knew $300 million made sense to spend on mm-hmm. it. Um, meanwhile, like one other thing I thought of in comparison to like recapturing magic and industry just doing that is like you have – the last dragon which is a good movie it's a really good movie but it's like it was two industries two two things that were being like brought back at its late stage which was motown and like martial arts movies and that movie's really good for both of those but it's also like late 80s early 90s it's on its way out uh, mm-hmm. so it's just um it was just something i was thinking about where like this movie felt so much like 
you got the guy who did the thing 10 years ago to try to do it again, Mm -hmm. which makes no sense. And uh, yeah, this was the part of the movie where I felt that the most, especially because this is the part of the movie that kind of had nothing happening because they're just talking in a hotel. (laughs) And then Grover holds up the head and freaks out the maid. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's basically What a dummy. Why did he even take it out? I don't even know I don't why. know. Why I don't know. That, why did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I don't they even know why they would have had the curtain open. My first thought would have been to have it shut. Especially because they're, uh, they're teens. They're older teens. So my thought is they would be smarter. But if they're younger, yeah. like they are in the show, I'm guessing, yeah. like making mistakes like that seem more sensible. Yeah. Anyway, oh, so there are a lot in... of mistakes made that make more sense for kids under the age of 15. Yeah. Being deluded into thinking, I'll just tell them I don't have the thunderbolt. <laughs> like that makes sense if you're 13 to yeah. i'll so just be annoyed. honest <laughs> yeah with hades i don't think so so they arrive in tennessee and they find the next pearls in a public athena statue um so they're like oh we'll have to just come back later so they sneak into the museum at night uh to take the pearl percy uses the flying shoes to get it and he does um but in doing so they end up being attacked by um some employees who who are actually a hydra um so it seems like a lot of creatures can hide as humans and Mm -hmm. then they can turn back into their creature form um kind of neat to think like the hydra could be like separate people and then somehow connected i thought that was like that um i in general i just like the idea of like the threats are just like we're here for the bolt and he's like i don't have it (laughs) to me (laughs) okay we're gonna kill you anyway (laughs) yeah like um or we don't believe you we're gonna kill you anyway yeah, yeah, it's it's neat. Um, it means like if a, a better writer could make a recurrent gag about mm-hmm. that. And so but but there is no recurrent gag. So they have this fight with the Hydra. It looks pretty cool. The visual effects here are pretty neat. Percy learns <sighs> yeah. he has water based powers, water based force powers that aren't just healing, but also he can fight with the water. He blows up a water fountain to build a shield to protect himself from the Hydra. This is another thing about like <laughs> the Creek mythology world that I feel like these people don't know anything about within the world itself. Like, does it even exist? Yeah, Percy the didn't know. Time- don't cut off their heads. But I, I can forgive Percy not knowing because he didn't like grow up in the world the way probably Grover did, but the way that Annabeth did say she did. She like grew up at Camp yeah. Half Half Blood. What are they teaching there except fighting? I don't know. But this whole time that they're fighting with the Hydra, while it still has its normal amount of heads, she could be yelling, like, just be careful, don't cut off the head because yeah, it'll come back thing. as two. Like yeah. you can like people have conversations during fights all of the time. Yeah, it's, it's called not we, super in realistic, video games but we do happens. this better. <laughs> So, like, he's cutting off the heads, and she's like, no, 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 no. And, like, no, two more will grow. Like, you just, yeah, just keep, keep, keep it going. Like, yes. you could have said this ahead of time, but you didn't. Um, so, yeah, Percy learns the water based force powers. He uses it to fight back. And then finally, Grover pulls the Medusa head out to, because, oh, that's right. They save the Medusa head because they're like, it still has its power, even mm-hmm. if she's dead. So yeah. They open up the eyes, and they actually are able to turn the hydra into stone and i like that the idea of like they're also in like a public it's not like a museum but it's a a museum so they're turning like they're making a new statue for it so there's some there's like you could see what the book has that's good yeah um that the movie is kind of not doing so well Mm -hmm. hey there listener want to influence the podcast head on over to patreon.com forward slash cinematic doctrine and support the show for three dollars a month In doing so, you'll be able to vote on a movie poll that picks a film we discuss each month. So jump on over there and have your voice heard. So the last Pearl, um, the gang heads to a casino where the last Pearl is going to be located. Um, (laughs) They're captured by the allure of the casino and they do get stuck gambling. And by allure, I mean literal allure. It's called like the the Lotus Lotus Casino. casino, Um, I wasn't familiar with this particular Greek myth but oh, like was basically I. <laughs> they eat these lotus cookies and it causes them to want to stay mm-hmm. in the casino spending money although like if they don't have money i don't know so i guess like maybe there's something about siphoning power i, I i'm curious what the book gets into in this or even the original myth because it's i like that kind of idea it's kind of horrific so but they end up like eating the food and it keeps them there the only note i have here that's particularly funny and this is one of the things when I, when I observed it, I thought was so interesting. I couldn't wait for the podcast to talk about this. Mm-hmm. Um, 
during the scene because obviously it's 2010. They play Lady Gaga's poker face. <laughs> but funnily enough, the one part of it that's most prominent is the part that goes pa 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 poker face and then I'm censoring this f f her face. Um and that is the lyric. I don't know if people know that, but the lyric is she that. goes pa 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 poker face f f f her face using the f word, the yeah. first word. And I learned that because there's actually a clip where um Lady Gaga is talking about this really funny like moment where a radio station like poker face is out everybody's playing it it's like the big hit this radio station's like hey we love your song we really want to play it we know people want to hear it but every time people ask us we can't play it because we do not have the censored version can you send us the radio edit and she chuckled and goes you're the only station who's called us and learned that that's the lyric all the other <laughs> stations had no idea that she was saying that and so uh that's i funny. just thought it was funny that this rated pg movie <laughs> that has a uh, a decapitation scene that we don't see, has demons in it and violence and stuff, has two F words specifically mm -hmm. that are sexual, uh, because usually a PG-13 movie can permit one to two F words that yeah. are not sexual related. That's funny to me. Uh, and it's also the fact that it's in a <laughs> oh, casino scene great. that in the original book, they would have been teenage, uh, young yeah. teenagers as opposed to older teens. Uh. Um I figured Which, again, this was like the thing in that was It was most, this like, and then there's a like it's like there's like the later scene when they do end up getting to, to under the underworld. <laughs> yeah. But I will say a caveat to that is like satyrs are known to be very promiscuous. Like that is a yeah. thing. And I'm sure yeah. they're like that their entire lives. I don't know how like I don't know much else about them. But so like I can forgive that part, but it just it still feels so weird it just feels weird but uh that's just a particular interesting trivia that i thought was funny about this movie that's rated pg mm -hmm. um poseidon then whispers to percy and he uh says like you you're trapped you need to get out stop Wonder, the cookies. how long did it take him to tell him that i thought the same thing <laughs> like, i was like maybe poseidon was off doing stuff and then at some yeah, point was like the yeah. timeline's too soon like something's going wrong, I gotta find Like it's him. getting closer, what's going on, yeah. Or maybe he was playing some games too, and he's like, all right, time to stop. Yeah. <laughs> um, Poseidon whispers to him to stop eating the cookies, so he stops tripping. Um, yeah. So he ends up, uh, Poseidon then gets the other friends, says like, we gotta stop, we gotta get out of here. Mm -hmm. um, we got some cool character set dressing stuff that actually is a little more interesting. I would have liked, I liked our ideas for the Medusa lair, but some of these are cool where it turns out there's actually been people who have been stuck there for decades. Mm -hmm. but, and they you get like one cool scene that's like somebody who's like, oh, I love this pinball machine. It's for my favorite movie of this year. And they're like, that movie's from 1970s. Like, yeah, that's this year. You're like, oh, my gosh, this guy's been yeah. here for 50 years. And then after that's when you realize there's people in period clothing in the casino. So you get people, oh, yeah. there's like some 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, different outfits. Not enough. <laughs> I don't know if I caught that. And I actually yeah. wonder if I rewatched the scene from the start, you would see more. But like, yeah. I thought that was kind of neat. What I thought then would have been a cool scene is during the escape and the chase, you could have had people from different settings with different weapons yeah. fighting to get them. Because it could have been neat if like, it was like, oh, everybody's everybody get them and everyone turns around and you have like that guy with the tommy gun and they're like we yeah. can't we can't fight back they're just normal people so they're not fighting back and like uh, yeah there's the only... a better movie here there is <laughs> yeah well that would be cool and he could do that as like his spin on greek mythology i did end up looking it up really quick like what the lotus eaters are and it's prominent in the odyssey because odysseus and his men come across them oh, on so an they island there and it's they consume plants there that put them in a perpetual state of bliss and they lose all sense of urgency um it's from study.com i just like googled his first link can i get that in a pill right <laughs> so the idea of Please. like maybe making the period people do something kind of goes against the original yeah, myth, yeah, it could have made a cool scene though they could have like he could have like they could have created like a way to make that work or something like when you go in and you start taking the lotuses they take your stuff from you and mm -hmm. so now it's like these people who work at this place yeah like can reach into the can, chest whatever they want to get, get. A, you get like a silly gag where they open the chest and like inside is like all this all old the different stuff types, yeah um that could have been kind of neat 
Gosh, see, we we are better at this. We've seen movies before. We got to make a Percy Jackson movie. Yeah, come on, Disney. Let us make, let <laughs> let Percy Jackson yeah. be the thing where you just have people come in to make their version. <laughs> so Percy ends up finding the pearl in one of the games, and then the casino learns that they are loose heads, so they get chased out. They steal a car, and then they realize they've been trapped in there for five days, which means Zeus's war is going to start it's soon. Like, so they yeah. really got to get there. So this is my this is the thing I had an issue with the the plot hole that I and it maybe maybe I'm using plot hole wrong to describe this. So you have to correct me if I'm wrong. So they get in the car and Annabeth is like, oh, those are the lotus eaters. And like, I, they don't explain it or whatever. But it's like, it's like they ate and that's why we were stuck there. Mm-hmm. And they don't explain why. This is my problem. First, she's grown up in Camp Half-Blood. So she knows who she is, what she is. She knows about Greek mythology. Like, they're taught, they sh- theoretically are talking about all of this at Camp Half-Blood. Like, all the different monsters, the different myths, all this stuff. That aside, they go to a garden place and find out that it's run by Medusa, a Greek mm-hmm. monster. They fight Hydra. They go and they fight a Hydra, a Greek monster. Hmm, I wonder, this last place probably gonna have some sort of greek mythology yeah, issue problem pro- yeah that we gotta watch out for oh it's called the lotus casino you know what that reminds me of something yeah oh that they're offering us this you know what this reminds me of this don't eat the food there my first thought was just don't eat the food because <laughs> i'm like it's poison it's right? laced. i don't know <laughs> i feel like a lot of people who know like fantasy and mythology and this this is like a lot of readers and like a lot of people who watch movies is don't eat food given to you in yes. this type of world if you're a like protagonist, in a fae do world <laughs> Like one of the big thing is things is like in Irish folklore with the Fae, you go like a lot of it's underground. They tell you, do not eat the food offered to you. You will get stuck there. Like you will be permanently stuck there. So like my first thought when they're going up into this casino, I'm like, don't eat the food. Just don't eat the food. They haven't watched Pan's Labyrinth. Right? Exactly. <laughs> but it's just like, it was so like unbelievable to me that she like didn't connect with all the context clues of her entire life and the last couple of days that something probably was going to go wrong here so they should be extremely cautious like maybe don't do these things but even like the name like lotus should have like made her think about it and i'm just like huh everything she realizes comes at the end of the problem and i'm like this is where you should have said it at the beginning and we wouldn't have had a problem to begin with <laughs> yeah every, it's, it's just blame I, the woman cheryl man but you're falling into the patriarchy i know uh, <laughs> honestly but there's not I, even a horse <laughs> but honestly grover also also i mean known, he's a he's literal one of the Greek creatures mytholo- yeah. mythological creature like he should have known with the hydra scene uh, of all people he, as the protector he could have been like i know what this thing is right but yeah uh, the one of the biggest problems of the movie is even the film itself has no reverence for the particular mythology yeah whereas like you watch harry potter and like the movie knows how to make you excited for what's happening mm-hmm. it frames things like in an exciting way hogwarts you're like i can't wait to finally get there and it's also mysterious there's all these weird things you got to do to get there it's exclusive to a certain group of people and then when you're getting there you're going there like by boat in the middle of the night and you're getting a shot and you're like oh it's a castle and then when you get into hogwarts it's like this amazing wonderful labyrinth that like you can actually understand why all of these weird fatal things to the students could be located in the place because it's that big And then it also means like as a movie, when you're taking place in there, it's not I don't feel disconnected, even though Mm -hmm. the place never existed. Whereas like this movie, we're traveling across the United States. We've actually been across the United States and I've never felt less connected to my own home country without watching Percy Jackson. And it's like so weird. I don't I'm not even like familiar with these places and I've seen them in movies. I've been to some of the so it's just like it's so there's no magic to this magical fantasy film which yeah. is just it's just so weird that they do that been itching for cinematic doctrine merch check out the support tiers on patreon we're offering merch to those who support at select tiers so head on over to patreon.com forward slash cinematic doctrine and share your support there's a link in the show notes too but we're basically at the end of the movie because we have like mm-hmm. basically 1.5 scenes left. I said, onward to hell, Hollywood. 
Um, Obviously, and where so the underworld is. <laughs> it's like the one clever joke of the movie, and you're yeah. like, it wasn't even that clever. I know. <laughs> like, At this so, point, we're just annoying. tired. We're like, all right, let's just get to where we need to go. Let's go. <laughs> I didn't like verbalize any groan, but in my head, I think I rolled. In my head, I rolled my eyes. Of course, I did in my head. <laughs> but like, I rolled my eyes. Um, so Zeus's war storm is now across the United States. Uh, yeah, there's threat. like little news clips that we hear like there's this weird cloud that's like coming from asia all the way to america what is yeah. it and then it just like moves on to the next scene and we don't like like it's literally background noise that we're hearing this <laughs> stuff that could have been visual or like yeah. as we're exploring the world the setting is like the cloud looming like, over and the there's, kids, they there's could be looking up <laughs> like yeah yeah um maybe as the cloud spreads like more of zeus's people are there and they're getting closer to finding him mm -hmm. i don't know so anyways, Percy and the gang go to the Hollywood statue and they end up finding the door to Hades. I don't know what told them to go to. Oh, I guess they have the map. So it would have told mm -hmm. them the approximate location. Um, they enter Hades and it's a pretty cool looking location. Um, finally, the movie, this is my note. Finally, the movie has some interesting details and ideas to play with. I actually started to feel the majesty. Yeah. And it's in hell. Yeah. Which, <laughs> Which is, is okay. But yeah. like. It's so late in the movie. <laughs> I, I did have a slight critique that, and I was, as we were kind of talking, I wanted to like Google it before I like misspoke, but I think I'm, I think I'm mostly right. Hate, like Hades, the underworld. Isn't hell like the way Christians believe hell? It's supposed hell. to be like boring, isn't it's it? It's more like, like, I think the it's part like that void. they were depicting with all the fire and the screaming and, and everything is what is Tartarus. Which is definitely where people go to suffer and like right. all yeah. that kind of stuff. But it's never really descriptive as like the burning hellscape. But then there's like different levels to the underworld. Because like this is just where everyone dies. Like it, there is no, for in Greek mythology, there's no like heaven and hell. It's just like there's the underworld. Like void. But there's different levels of like you get to have peace and like you're growing your farm. There's a meadow. There's this. And then there's Tartarus, which is the lower level where like people suffer and like you're not going to get out of it except for the people who did like hercules and and like all the other mm -hmm. like people so like i was kind of bummed that they just like oh it's hell just make it fire and it's like <laughs> they have a line we could have been PG a little movie, more interesting in our pg movie that has poker face effort face <laughs> also has the line after you die, there's nothing but suffering. <laughs> and yeah. then shows a shot of people dying in hell. It's amazing. It's, it's crazy. Like, but it's out also of nowhere. like, for Greek mythology, <laughs> that's wrong. Because, I know, like I said, crazy. there's different levels. So it's like, the people who are in like the top <laughs> level, which I think is called Elysium, is what it's called. Um, da -da -da. I'm familiar with that term it's being paradise, related to like essentially. Paradise, yeah. But so like they're not suffering weird. in paradise, but whatever. This is just this. Like it's they so had silly. to make it like dangerous and like bad and like. And then they just go yeah. to like a McMansion, so it doesn't Basically. matter. Yeah, <laughs> it's it is it is a very misguided bad movie. Um, <sighs> I wonder what my party pleaser party. Oh yeah, that's right. Know, right? We decided <laughs> if it's a party pleaser or party pooper at the end. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. So it goes. I gotta just have a script for the start. Uh, so anyways, um. They enter into Hades. It's pretty cool looking. Whatever. They meet Persephone and Hades at a McMansion. It's a it's a castle. I'm just being. I'm Josh. Mm -hmm. Um. Turns out, in uh, while they're there, P Percy's trying to bargain to get his mother back. Yeah. And he's saying like, I, I don't, don't have, have the bolt. And Hades is like, you think okay. I'm just gonna believe that? So he ends up. They fight. They do a minor, minor, minor skirmish, in which um Percy ends up dropping the shield. And when he drops it, that's, of course, the time that we find that inside the shield's, like, scabbard or whatever is the bolt itself. Mm -hmm. So he's had the bolt the whole time without knowing it. Um, Hades then takes the bolt, but then Persephone takes the bolt from Hades and knocks him out and says, oh, he'll never remember that. So I guess that's how we finish that problem. Like I said, right. every time something is introduced, it's ended in that moment. Super fast, yeah. Um, Persephone's like, whatever, I'll just let you guys leave. I don't care. Well, she does have a good reason because she doesn't want to be there. She was kidnapped and she's like, if there's a war, like, I'm just going to be stuck here forever. So please take this away from my 
husband, I guess, and like do something. So she's got good reasoning, but it was so fast. It was so yeah. quick. <laughs> the, the, even the movie's tired. The movie's ready to right? get over with, even though there's still like probably three scenes that could have been cut from the movie and to keep it from being two hours long, mm-hmm. the movie's ready to be over. So Persephone's like, here, just take the bolt back, Percy. You can just take it to Zeus and stop the war from happening. They only have three pearls, though, so the Satyr Grover is just like, I'll stay. This is where it's like, if they were all preteens, the scene is a little weird, because mm-hmm. Persephone's like, I've never slept. Basically, it's like, I've but never slept I've with never a Satyr before. I've never had a Satyr before in this house. There's like a yeah. long pause, and then she like finishes whatever the sentence is, and it's like, Come Yeah, because freaking... Rosaria Dawson's also like, isn't yeah. this character supposed to be 13? <laughs> like, right. And it's like that character in the movie is set, probably 18, but whatever. It's just who I mean, we don't um, know the age. He could still be a minor, but whatever. He's a Greek. Yeah, thing. in satire ages, who knows? Yeah, that, uh, that's totally fair. <laughs> yeah, Grover is like, I'll stay back. I am the protector. So Percy, uh, Daddario, Percy, Annabeth, and the mother end up traveling out with the pearls. When they leave, they end up traveling to Olympus, but they're outside the gate of Olympus, so they're on the Empire State Building. Which I, it's, I found this so funny. They're like, wait, how do we know where to go? And then the mom is like, it's over there. And I'm like, wait, how does she I thought know? That too. Like, <laughs> yeah. how does yep. she know? Because the other way, like the way they figured out the where the door was to Hades was like, there was like a bit, like a big, like. I forget, like a shipping like container. A yeah. But it was like a shipping container and it had like a bunch of like funky words on it. And like at the very beginning of the movie, and this was like ne- neither here nor there for like people who want to know, but like Percy Jackson is technically dyslexic, but it's because he can read like ancient Greek. And so all the words kind of change and say like, beware all who enter here kind of thing. And they're like, oh, this must be the entrance to Hades. There wasn't any of that on the top of the Empire State Building to show where the yeah. entrance was let alone anything in ancient greek that the mother would not be able to read so how did she I just guess be like, like the, it's over there like i guess I the know. implication would have been that like uh like she she knew because of the lore I, of how the law started because remember like we, we'll find out that the reason that um the gods can't interact with humans or demigods Mm -hmm. specifically because of Poseidon's relationship with her. Yeah. Um, But uh, yeah, it is the movie neither cares about itself and is trying to finish fast, but also the movie does not even care about its own plot. Mm -hmm. It is a movie that has no cares whatsoever. Christopher Columbus is like paycheck, please, whatever. So now my final header, the lightning thief, uh, so we just find out basically Luke stole the bolt and mm-hmm. then hid it inside the shield to give it to him. Um, and Luke but just wanted to start war because he says, they're like, why did you want to do that? And he goes, for power. No explanation on what that means. Yeah. And again, going back to like, Percy What's to didn't... say he would get the power? <laughs> right? That too. But like, Percy didn't have the shield with the lightning bolt in it until after getting to camp half blood and after deciding he was going to go save his mom in Hades. So like how did again, how did Percy Jackson get pointed at that he was the one that stole the bolt? Yeah, not it, because not explained in the It's movie. not like Luke was starting to put the blame on Percy Jackson because Luke never met Percy Jackson until he no, got to Camp Half Blood. No, he did, yes. And then yeah. that's when he decided, "Oh wait, I can I can shove this off on a print. They already think he has it for some reason. Let's just make it true. Like there, there's literally no, like I can't, like there are not many movies that just don't tell you something. And like th- this, the it, this, this, to this movie doesn't secret... tell you its main plot. Like how did it yes. come to be? <laughs> and again, I don't remember how, like, I'm sure it's in the book. I'm sure in the new movie, like there'll be something like, like somehow get the point, like somehow he's getting framed for something. Like maybe like you were saying at the beginning, like a jealousy thing between Poseidon and Zeus. And like maybe Poseidon really does only have one son. And so we know it can't be him. You're jealous of Zeus because of this law that was made, which is probably why it happened, which is why Percy was point, like got the, got framed. But that's not explained in the movie. And so, like, there's this big gaping hole. And in terms of that's... mystery, <gasps> like, the fact that he's Hermes' son and can get around and knows how to get around does set up the idea that it's like, oh, okay, yeah, Luke 
had the ability to steal the ball, mm-hmm. right? Um, but then because of the mythology and the stuff, you're like, if this thing's so powerful, or at least a conduit for power, wouldn't it be sent? Like, couldn't you sense it? Couldn't yes. creatures, like, wouldn't it be something you would know? Or, yeah. like, is it like the ring of power where, like, it it draws people, but it's also, like, private and secret. Yeah. So, like, the ring of power is almost like this eldritch creation that simultaneously, like, it is what it is, where it's present and not at the same mm-hmm. time, which is, like, a, it what makes it so mysterious and cool. Whereas, like, the bolt just, like, is it's powerful (laughs) like okay that doesn't tell me anything they can smell the demigod blood on percy but they can't but they can't smell the bolt from the bolt or something yeah not sulfur i don't know but i know electricity does smell and like but like did the metal that luke put it in with the shield did it block something like even that wasn't explained like did the shield have a tingling sensation when he used it like Uh, yeah Better filmmaking <laughs> can can add that mystique to it, of which, like, <sighs> we already know with Lord of the Rings. Like, that's what filmmaking can do. That's why there was a practical uh, ring that was massive. So when they did close-up shots to have scale and size, it helped give it, like, height and power. Mm-hmm. So, like, you because when you do framing and you have stuff like that. But this was a movie that, like, when you're watching it, you're like, this is lazy. Like, there mm-hmm. there is not a lot of focus on it. Um, they're assume- I think what they did is, like, they assume everyone knows Greek mythology and they read the book. And so they can kind of figure it out. We can leave out some mm-hmm. of those stuff we could get the most important things in but though they don't have to worry about it it feels like watching turns the hobbit. out they left out the important stuff yeah it it's does. like watching the hobbit where yeah. you're like ah it's just they don't they don't care that much about it mm-hmm. um and uh that makes it tough but yeah we have this fight with luke um they're both fighting with the the flying shoes uh, my note just says hilarity ensues. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> it's so weird <laughs> <laughs> my note uh here is just that like so basically, as they're fighting, they only have a couple minutes left to get the bolt yeah. up into Olympus, uh, or else Zeus is going to cl- declare war. Yeah. And then my note is like, wouldn't there like be watchmen for Olympus who could just right? see the fight happening? Or like Zeus is, I think no. even Poseidon says it at the beginning, like Zeus is omnipotent or something, or something like that. Why doesn't uh, Zeus maybe, notice? But, but, but even like, I'm reading the Bible, right? And the Bible talks about even at that time they had watchmen on walls right and we know that like watchmen were not permitted to sleep because right. it's like if you were asleep and then someone Something died happened. on your watch yeah it's, it's your fault mm-hmm. <laughs> so like is there <sighs> nobody like watching right? from the skies harpies exist right like they could just use those like... <laughs> like like so the <sighs> fact that it's like there's five minutes left, it's like no you are within like Olympus's you're, you're, grounds, right? Yeah, you it are, counts. Th- they should be like, oh, Zeus should just show up and be like, oh, it was you, Luke. I feel the power of my I bolt. I am now like Omni-Man. I will blow your head up and right? just take the bolt or something. Uh, like, there's no reason that there should be like this countdown. Um, right. I would understand it if it was like, we now started to know the like territories. Like, if this bolt is not in my territory. Yeah. By this time, I will consider this like every every continent or or nearby territory is colluding against me. Yeah, because then it would be like that's petty, right? That would show something about Zeus's character to be like, yeah. if it's not within a foot of my territory, I'm gonna just kill somebody, yeah. and that would be really compelling. Because then it's like Zeus is a villain, yeah. but here it's like, no, Zeus isn't a villain. Zeus is a moron. <laughs> like, yeah, Zeus he's, is he's just like, stupid. I want my bolt back. <laughs> Yeah, that's like okay. It. Get out of your playpen and go get it, you dummy! Like, right. you're your, who's like? But like, you could just I go guess get it. What they might have been trying to go for is like Zeus. Really, he was impulsive. I mean, let's talk about how many kids he had with how many different people. He was very impulsive, and so I feel like that might have been what they were trying to do by him being like, Maybe. "My bolt was stolen. I want it back. Otherwise, there's a war." Like that's that's a bit of an escalation with little time. They know they can't have contact with their kids. Like, how was he supposed to be able to go tell Percy? Like, by the way, they think you have this. All the gods are going to be coming for you. Go find it and bring it back. Like, man, what's the point of being a god if you can't do anything? 
Why do they have all these exactly. rules? Exactly. <laughs> this movie so doesn't boring. make sense. It's so boring. I also want to comment that <laughs> them flying with those shoes, they must have had incredible core strength. Because, like, the wings are it on the shoes. It does look like they have to, yeah. And they stand up when they fly. Uh, I, can't, I don't even want to try. Because, like, <laughs> I think physics-wise... They would be head over heels flying, technically, right? Yeah, and <laughs> like, if they put on Chuck Taylors fashionably, they are falling right off. Like, <laughs> maybe they could right get, off. like, horizontal <laughs> as they fly, but I still feel like that would just take a lot of core strength. And they're just not as cool <laughs> as the broom. I mean, when I was yeah. a kid, I wanted a Nimbus 3000. Yes. Like, you that was, fly like, around so everywhere. cool. Like, the coolest thing. And then the next book is, like, there's the Nimbus 4000 or whatever. Like, I'm like, I what the that heck? One. <laughs> like, this no, is, like, I want to fly thing. around on those, um, those like, creepy dead horses with wings that you only see yeah. if you've seen someone die. I want one of those. <laughs> not that I want to see someone Harry die. Potter I don't want to so see someone cool. die, but I want that. <laughs> I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, but I would watch Harry Potter again over this any day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like well, Harry Potter is just amazing because it also has like marketability. What what yeah. cool thing can be sold from Percy Jackson? It's literally nothing. Want some quick updates on the podcast? Follow the Cinematic Doctrine Instagram for cool posts and story updates. Press the link in the show notes or search Cinematic Doctrine, that's one word, in your Instagram app. Oh, and we're on threads. Check us out there, too. But yeah, Percy, you know, he beats he beats Luke. He does like the cool anime character. I use my power to defeat you thing. He uses water to like hit him yeah. and then like electrocutes him. And so he beats him. Um, Percy, then he tosses him into the ocean by creating a trident and throwing it at him. And Luke goes flying and into the it's ocean. It's a trident. So Fantastic. it's three points. Yeah. And the three points go through his neck. So one of them definitely just like. <laughs> I guess you're right. Yeah, I didn't notice that. I it's just wild. figured it was like to side. But maybe because it's water, it doesn't actually like stab him. Like it doesn't stab, but all the rest of it stays solid. I it's don't know. It's just surprisingly violent for a movie that doesn't do a lot of violence right? to humans other than like nicks and cuts on their, yeah. on their like through their clothing. <laughs> um, so it's a little funny. But yeah, Percy then returns the bolt. There's some heart to hearts between like gods and father and son. Um, then Percy ends up staying at Camp Half Blood at the end. Um, Whoop did it! And then uh, <laughs> everywhere you look, everywhere you go, whatever. Yeah. Um, the friends theme song. Grover, know, yeah, uh, Grover is saved house. from the underworld because Percy's like, I did this for you, and it wasn't even my fault. I want my friend back from the underworld. And Zeus is like, okay, like sure. okay, fine. And so he's fine. Like they all come back. He gets his horns because that was a big thing that like Sater is like earn their horns or whatever. And he's like, do you see anything different about me? Ha 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 ha. And it's like, just get it over with. And then like there's almost a kissy thing. Gosh, and just like, in contrast, even there, like I wanted as a kid, I wanted the cloak from Harry Potter. I wanted everything from Harry yeah. Potter. But I could, just watching this, I'm like, I don't know if like there's anything you would like want. I mean, I want to learn to fight like Annabeth. Like that's cool. But like that's in any movie that has this kind of stuff i want to learn to fight like that like i want to be able to yes. like be like spider-man like give me something in like you're saying like so the invisibility cloak is something a little bit more unique maybe not super unique because like the cloaks in lord of the rings they also make you invisible but again like that's like but the wands and like playing like wizard battles that kind of thing like that's so... giant chess and stuff like the floating candles, the food that just appears, but we don't talk about that because those are like indentured house elves technically making the foods. <laughs> Although I think at Hogwarts, they're a little bit more free, but that's how it is. Like they're making all the meals and it like, so but it's still, I want my cool. food delivered Everything that about way. It's magical. Whereas <laughs> yeah. like Percy Jackson has nothing, like, eh. there's nothing beautiful. I mean, I, Hey, like pivoting into the end, right? Party yeah. pooper, party pooper. For me, total complete party pooper. Same. So boring. Yeah, it really is. It is. It is a boring movie. It has <sighs> no magic. There's nothing fun. There's nothing mystical. Um, there are some movies that you watch that are made for families that are still like maybe a little older teen mm -hmm. or, or maybe like preteen, but they still like they they take you back. That's why yeah. I like watching like teen dramas sometimes because it takes yeah. you back to that fantasy of like what you might have wanted your teenage years to be. Not like the like junky trash adult euphoria tier where it's like this is what we nobody no teen is ever like uh but like i'm talking like uh to all the boys i've loved before that mm. kind of stuff you can get the fantasy version of that like something with with something like harry potter where it's like fun and exciting it transports yeah. you back you feel like a kid it, it's and it's fun and 
here, like Harry Potter captures like what you and your friends en- envisioned at recess. But Percy Jackson, the movie is like, it's just like a bad movie. It's so boring. It's like all mushed together. I think another movie to compare it to, uh, well, maybe not compare, but like how you're using Harry Potter, uh, Chronicles of Narnia. Um, not the BBC. I mean, the BBC ones were always really fun, but like the the newer one that had like Liam Neeson as Aslan. I remember That's enjoying the first, the first movie, one better. I, yeah. yeah, the first one does what you just described about like transporting me back to either childhood, just childhood wonderment in general. It transported me back to like how I felt while reading the book, and then everything there, like as much as it came from a bad person, I wanted the Turkish delight and the hot chocolate. I wanted to see <laughs> yeah. I wanted to see the lamppost. I wanted to meet Santa Claus. I wanted to have a talking fox as a there's friend. Icons. Like there's yes. so many things in that. Like and even like they're getting swords and arrows and all this kind of stuff. Like they're getting all these things. I wanted all of that. Like that was really cool. And like that was at least a good story that like got explained well. This one is like super weird. Similar to where you grew up and how you have like these locations you remember these mm-hmm. things you did these stores these people like a good a, a transcendent book right like the top 10 yeah. selling books ever which are like you know chronicles of narnia and harry potter and yeah. like, and then like orwell and like other stuff like mm-hmm. those have icons that like if i were to do a minimalist painting you'd go oh yeah that's chronicles of narnia and like you would look at it yep, and you're like you it's know. barely a lamppost yeah <laughs> and right? you would still know <laughs> it would barely a wardrobe and still yeah. know barely the mane of a lion you would still know harry potter has the same thing barely a wand even like a wand with a snake around it you would mm-hmm. like it, it would instantly know yeah. stuff to you lord of the rings same deal uh, at least from this movie i don't know about the book um, but although the cover, I like the idea of like someone coming out of the ocean and they have this bolt mm-hmm. of lightning. That's such a cool, like, cause you know, lightning and water don't mix. So exactly. something about that's really yeah. ma- magical, but like from this film, it doesn't make any of that. Whereas like Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and then even kind of the first Chronicle of an Aria movie you're talking about as a standalone movie, they're all capable of doing exactly what I described mm-hmm. that those books do. So yeah, but but I digress. Like party pooper for me completely. Yep. This this was so boring. My letterbox review is like a two out of ten. It's so, it was just <laughs> like, how is there a guy outside of the door Olympus going literally? I'm I, the lightning thief. Yeah, <laughs> and no army comes out to go. It's you <laughs> and yeah, capture right? him. Like uh, what? <laughs> He's basically speaking treason. And no one hears it except he Percy watched, Jackson and the other two. Lord like, of the Rings one, like, and you have wait, I don't which which one Pippin? Oh, Frodo Baggins, it's he's him, over there. and they freak out. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and like, like yeah, and Frodo's like, shut up, and like, and they're not even near Mordor. Yeah, <laughs> like, and I'm pretty sure no one in the in the inn would have like reacted uh, in any kind of way because they don't know Frodo from anybody. And but it's like, like a, it's like a nightmare scene <laughs> <laughs> because you know the weight uh, of what has just happened um whereas this it's like the exact it's like brain dead comparison it really is um so yeah, yeah I, I agree total, definitely yeah. a party pooper <laughs> i think i remember liking it when i first saw it which i think was sort of close to when i read the book and i was like okay for what it was it did well but that's all we had at that time i was younger i still oh, have yeah. a Teens spot probably in my, be okay with yeah. the movie. i had like i have a soft spot in my heart for like the movies much like we were talking about fast fashion for the patreons things can be bad and you can still enjoy it like i think the important thing is maybe like you acknowledge that like you know there are flaws like i'm not stupid this this thing does suck but i like it it's entertainment this does not cover those this was very like you said very (laughs) boring it's not really entertaining i felt awkward and like embarrassed watching it like just yeah. it felt so weird. I am curious uh-huh. about the TV show to see how they do. At least they have age appropriate kids like for the novel um, and all that kind of stuff. And like it's a TV series. So they're going to do a little bit better getting into the explanation of things and all that kind of stuff. Don't know if I'll watch it, but we'll see. It might be one of those things when I'm like bored on my time off. I might watch it. Um, <laughs> who knows? But this movie. Yeah. Party pooper all the way. I don't even think you can get a drinking game out of it. <laughs> like it's not even that good there's like nothing you can get 
You may not know this, but the easiest way you can show your support for Cinematic Doctrine is to rate and review the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen. So press pause and share your thoughts. We'd love to hear what you have to say. And then press play again so you can hear the rest of the show. Uh, what? What? Uh, let's do the recommendations then. What recommendation do you have? If you don't have one, that's fine. We always forget, but we must do it. I it know. has to happen. <laughs> I, I, it's called. Oh, I'm gonna say this so wrong. The 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 brand is called Cuckool. C U C K O O L. It's basically a giant heating pad that you can put into the microwave. That oh heats yeah, up. I know those. Yeah, there's like the menstruation crustacean that is sold, and it's a lobster that you put in the microwave, and it's used as a heating pad. I honestly, I got That's this a for Christmas, very cute and name. I love it. This is a black. I'm showing a black cat to my brother because we have video up, but you just stick it in the microwave. It heats up, but like you can fall asleep with this. And I don't know about some of the lady listeners here, but I go to bed with cramps sometimes, and like I want to have the heating pad because it helps, but it could start a fire. Like it's a it's a fire hazard yeah, to have it plugged in. Have it. Stuff. This is this this ele- this microwavable cat pad. <laughs> you could microwave is your not, cat. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not a fire hazard. And honestly, it's it's been great. Like I had like knee issues the other day, and I had it for that. I was cold, and Thomas heated it up, and I was able to warm up with it. I went to bed with it the other night because I wasn't feeling well, and I didn't cause a fire in the house. So honestly, go get yourself. A microwavable cat heating pad or the menstruation <laughs> crustacean. Um, alternatively, I'm going to recommend a movie that I just recently watched. Uh, what I, I trying to pick things that are like correlated to the gifts that I got for Christmas. Um, I'm not recommending dead space downfall, although surely I did enjoy rewatching again. So thanks for buying that for me. I have not watched it since living at the Rosalind house. So it was really cool to rewatch. You were young at that time. (laughs) Should you have watched this? Movie? Just super violent. I played Dead Space. <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> I wanted to watch the movie, that's why I watched it. Um, but uh, that movie was good. No, I'm not recommending that. I am recommending Todd Browning's The Unknown. If you like Todd Browning's The Freak or or Free, it's called Freaks. Um, then you will like The Unknown. Mm, okay. It's one of his silent era movies before he did Freaks, and then you know his career <laughs> was ruined. But it is equally as twisted and really good. Um, if you're familiar with Freaks, that particular movie has actual um, born with uh, defects. I don't know what the appropriate terms are for that, but like has bodily uh, uh, bodily born. Born with issues. So, like, mm-hmm. Freaks has people without legs and arms and, like, conjoined twins, people that are, like, mal- malformed and stuff. But it's a beautiful, wonderful movie. I'm not recommending that one, although I love it and I could recommend Freaks it. Freaks is time. very, very good. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the Unknown is also set in a circus. It is a silent era film about this circus troupe where there's this, um, the daughter of the one who runs the circus place. Everyone loves her. But she hates all men because all of them are handsy. So she in particular mm. hates hands. And Ooh. she befriends the man who has no arms <gasps> and that loves him. That sounds so interesting. And the man with no arms loves her. Um, and But then the man with no arms also knows that the strong man of the troop loves her. So it becomes this drama triangle of like the man with no arms has this unrequited love that wants to like be Mm. known to her, but she looks up to him because she's a man who has no arms and therefore would never take advantage of her. Um, Maybe, I guess we'll find out. It's, it is amazing. And like the places it goes, I was like, we're talking, my eyes were wide. (laughs) We're talking the ending. My toes were curling. I was breathing heavy. This movie oh, is are good moments, then. truly amazing. Um, okay. I was blown away. Complete 9 out of 10 movie for me. Nice. Um, if I rewatch it, it'll probably end up being a 10 out of 10. It's called The Unknown. You can probably find it streaming somewhere. It's on the Criterion channel. It's on Tubi. I got it because my wife got me the Todd Browning um, release that came out in October for Criterion that comes with The Unknown Freaks and then the, the thought-to-be-lost movie, The Mystic, which they re- recreated, uh, re-put together. Um but yeah, the unknown, it'll it'll literally blow your mind. Again, it's a silent era movie, so it's going to be all piano the whole time, but the piano is just as good as well. Um, if you're an old head for movies, I am not, so I'm not familiar with a lot of these names, but Lon Chaney, mm. um, Lon is, Chaney the is the good. lead guy. And then I think is Joan he the Crawford man with no arms, it. or is he the strong man? He plays man. the man with no arms. Okay. And then the strong man, Norman Carey, 
Norman Carey, I don't know. But yeah, this this movie will blow your mind. It is sick. It is twisted. Yeah. It is non-graphic, but it's like, it doesn't matter. The implications of what yeah. take place are really great. Okay. And you'll probably step away being like, that was one of the best movies I've ever seen. So yeah. check it out, The Unknown. It'll blow your mind. Thanks so much for checking out this episode of Cinematic Doctrine. If you enjoyed this episode, consider leaving a review and subscribing to the podcast. And as mentioned before, Cinematic Doctrine has a Patreon. For as little as $3 a month, you're opted into a once a month movie poll where you decide a movie we discuss on the podcast. There are other unique benefits that come with supporting the podcast, so be sure to check that out at patreon.com forward slash cinematic doctrine. A special shout out to those who support at the Art House Theater tier on Patreon. Thank you so much, Mom, Dad, Melanie, Sherlyon, and Thomas. You guys are the best, and your continued monetary support is greatly appreciated. Until next time, stay cool. Want some Cinematic Doctrine swag? You're in luck. We've got 3-inch Cinematic Doctrine logo stickers exclusive for Patreon supporters. Perfect for your travel mug or laptop. Head over to patreon.com forward slash cinematic doctrine, link in the show notes, and choose the independent theater tier. Doing so will net you other perks too. But let's be real, the podcast stickers are the coolest perk. So get yourself some podcast stickers by supporting on Patreon.